Given an array of size n, how can you design an algorithm to efficiently find the majority element? That's about today's video. Let's get into it. Hi everyone, my name is Steve. Today we're going through elliptical problem 169, majority element. This is a very easy problem, but uh, and there are multiple ways to do this, to solve this problem. Let's take a look at the uh, problem description first. Given an array of size n, find the majority element. The definition of majority element is the element that appears more than half of the n times. So you may assume the array is non-empty and the majority element always exists in this array. Let's take a look at the two examples. One example is 3, 2, 3. The majority element that appears more than 3 divided by 2 is 1. As long as the element appears more than once, that means it appears at least twice, then it will be qualified as a majority element. So in this case, it's 3. The second example is 2, 2, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2. So total, there are 7 elements. 7 elements divided by 2 is 3. So as long as the element appears more than three times, so at least four times. So here it's two, the number two. So its output is two. Of course, there are multiple ways. The, the most brute force way that you can come up with is to use a hash map to just build a hash map. The key is the val um, key is the element, like say two or one here or three or two here. And then the value of the hash map is just the count, the frequency of this number that appears how many times in this given array. Of course, you can do that. That's one way. Or another way that you can just Use, um, use whatever the language provided sorting utilities to sort this given array and then you just take out the element that's sitting in the middle of this sorted array that's guaranteed to be the majority element. But the one that we're going to talk about today is called Boole voting algorithm. How that algorithm works? The first point that we need to be very clear about this algorithm is that if this majority element does exist in this given array, which it is, is the case as the problem described, there must be only one majority element because it, the, to be qualified as a majority element, it needs to appear more than half of the array length times. So there must be only one. Okay, this is number one point. The number two point to help us understand is basically balance everything off. If there's such a, an element that appears more than half of the array length time, then everything else must be balanced off. Like say, we'll just, we'll just use this one as an example to, to go through this Boole voting algorithm. If, like say, the other elements, in this case, it's these three ones, all of these elements will be balanced off. So this one can be, this one balanced off by this two, this one balanced off by this two, this one balanced off by this two. The last element is this one, it's still two. That's why the majority element, so the how the Boole voting algorithm really works, the idea behind this is that every element could be balanced off. So just you just keep deleting the non-majority element until at the very end, the true majority element will still stand. Now let's just quickly take a look. We'll use two variables. One is candidate, the one that we can keep changing. The second variable is going to be a counter. So counter will help us uh, keep track of the number of frequencies that haven't been balanced off by the ones by the ones that we have traversed through. Okay, in the very beginning, candidate will use the first the the very first element in the array as the candidate. So at first candidate is two, counter is one. And then we'll just keep iterating. Now we, we get this two. So candidate is still two but counter becomes two because we met this we met this candidate twice, right? And then we keep iterating. Now when we're encountering this one, now counter needs to be balanced off because this there are two twos that we have encountered, but one two has been used to balance off this none two element, right? So counter becomes one. And then we'll keep iterating. We'll keep moving to, towards the right. And then this one, we use another two to balance this one off. So now counter becomes zero. Then we'll keep iterating. We'll keep moving towards the right. Now the the uh, the the pointer is moving is pointing towards here, this one. But before we do anything else, the one thing that we need to check is whenever counter becomes zero, we'll change the candidate to be the current number that we're iterating on. I hope that makes sense because that means everything else, the, the previous possible candidate has been completely balanced out. So we'll need to use the current to be the new candidate. And then we'll increment counter by one as well. And then we'll keep iterating towards the right. 
Now we are, we are encountering two. Two is not the current candidate. So we'll use current candidate to balance out this one. So we decrement the counter from one to zero. And then we'll, we'll encounter this one, right? But this one is not the current candidate. So what are we going to do? And the counter is zero. So what are we going to do? We're going to do, what we're going to do is to use this one. We iterate under this one and we check counter is zero. So we need to use this one to be the new candidate. And then we increment counter by one. Then we finished. At the end, we'll just return candidate, which in this case is correct. Candidate is just the final majority element that we can return. So basically we used the majority element to balance out the non-majority element one by one. In the very end, only the majority element could remain. That is by the definition, right? Majority element appears more than half of the array length. So it, it just, it, it needs to survive until the very end. That's the entire algorithm. I hope that makes sense. Let's just quickly put the algorithm into the actual code. Let's see. Int. Let's see. Int counter uh, start from zero and candidate start from the very first one. And then we'll have a for loop to go through this. Start from the second one and nums length i plus plus. So first, We'll check if counter equals to zero. If it equals to zero, we'll just change the candidate to be the current one. And then if nums i equals candidate, that means we have encountered the current candidate more than once. Another time, we'll just increment counter by one. Otherwise, will decrement counter by one. That means we need to use one of the current candidate majority element to balance off the, the current one that we're iterating on, which is not the candidate. All right, after finishing through, this is the, just one for loop. After this, what we can just return candidate. Because as the problem says, it's guaranteed that the majority element always exists in this array. Now let's hit submit and see. Accept it. Um, the time complexity of this problem, of this solution, is going to be on. We only need to traverse, there's only one for loop here. We only need to traverse this given array only once. And space complexity is O1, constant, right? We don't need any extra data structure. So that's how the Boole voting algorithm works. If this video helps you understand how Boole voting algorithm works or the very efficient way to solve the majority element problem, do me a favor and hit the like button. That's going to help a lot. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel as we're going through a lot of very classic lead code or interview questions to help people better prepare for their upcoming coding interviews. And if you have any comments, questions, advice, please just comment down below in the comment section. I really appreciate it. That's it for today's video. I'll see you guys in the next one.